everyone we are on the last part of the IELTS speaking test and in this video I'll show you what to expect from part 3 of the test as well as some tips on how to answer those questions. So in part 3 of the test you will be given roughly 4 to 8 questions and these will be based on a similar topic to what you got asked in part 2. However in this section the examiner will be asking you multiple specific questions and it will not just be you talking for 2 minutes straight. This section lasts for five minutes actually and therefore you have roughly 40 seconds to answer each question so you need to put in some details into your answers. And what are these questions like? So normally they will be thought provoking, they'll make you think quite deeply about an issue and they will normally ask about your opinion. For example they might ask about the advantages and disadvantages of whatever you were asked in part two. For example if you got asked about technology then it's very possible they will ask you what are the specific advantages and disadvantages of this technology, what are the problems associated with it, and what you think are the solutions, and lastly, how has this issue changed in the last 100 years, or how do you think it will change in the future? So this is speculation, your, what you think will happen. And here are my general tips on answering these questions. So you want to give detailed answers, with reasons and if you can sometimes include examples. If you really want to include an example but can't think of one it's perfectly fine to lie and make it up because the examiner is only interested in your level of English. If you include examples this shows a higher level of English therefore you'll get a better mark. However I would avoid really obvious lies such as saying something like 90% of people in the world are Chinese. This is clearly not true. I don't think you'd I don't know if you'd lose marks for it, but just avoid it anyway. But you can make up some more believable statistics or examples, such as 50% of workers in Hong Kong get the MTR to work. I just made that up and it sounds believable and this could help you get a higher mark. You also want to give your opinion, but very importantly, explain why you think that. So a lot of people forget to explain why they think what they think. That's important. And lastly, talk about our opinions as well. So when giving other people's opinions, you can say something like, on the other hand, many people believe, however, or despite this, some people would argue and then say their own opinion. So remember, you're not trying to convince the examiner of the way you think. You're just trying to show off your English skills. So don't be afraid to counter your own argument with other opinions. And actually, this will help you get a higher mark. So we have more tips. Normally three or four sentences is long enough when answering these questions. So what I mean by this is you don't need to include absolutely all of these tips into each and every question. You can vary it up. I will show you more examples of this in the next video. And what you always want to do though is give an answer. Don't just say nothing. You will lose marks if you say nothing. Even a short answer is better than nothing. You also don't need to worry about using different tenses because the examiner will ask you a question specific to the past or the future or the present or different tenses as well. And lastly, practice. Practice makes perfect. The more you practice part three questions, the better you will do in the exam and therefore the better the mark you will get. I have another tip here about paraphrasing. We discussed this in some previous videos. And if you're really not sure how to answer a question and you don't think you can give a lot of detail, Paraphrasing can help uh, give you a better answer and it can also help focus your answer too. So here's an example of a question. How do you think people can reduce water pollution? Maybe you don't really know how to answer it so you can paraphrase the question and this looks impressive. You can say, what can the average person do to help ensure water is kept clean? Uh, I believe that and then answer the question. Now you don't need to use this for every single question you get but you can just vary it up. And lastly, I have some useful phrases for you to learn. So if you are really struggling to answer a question, like you've already spent a few seconds thinking and you still don't know what to say, you can start your answer with one of these phrases and this will give you some extra time to think. I'll not go through absolutely all of them. You can pause the video and look at them. However, just know that you don't want to use these phrases for every single question. But you can vary it up along with paraphrasing and some other ways of starting the sentence. 
And of course, if you just don't understand the question at all, it's perfectly fine to ask the examiner to explain it or to repeat the question. So that is today's video, everyone. Tomorrow I will go through some actual questions from part three, give you some model answers so you can see real examples of how to answer them. And again, if you have any questions at all, you can email me and thank you for watching.